Hello, today is April 10th, 2023, and we are here to talk about the impact of zero DTE options trading. My name is Brent Kachuba, and I'm the founder of Spot Gamma. And for many years now, we've been measuring how options can drive underlying stocks. Obviously, zero DT has become a big component of that. Uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to show some proprietary research of how uh, we see zero DT driving markets, as well as some of the prominent bank research from uh, the likes of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and Bank of America. The key summary here, for those of you who have a little bit of a shorter attention span, is that there has been obviously a very large increase in options volume that's been driven by zero DT that occurred late in 2022. However, the amount of volume in the S&P, as well as the percentage of volume that is zero DT, has really peaked up around 45%. Our spot gamma data shows that zero DT is a mix of flows from various participants, including directional traders, what we call static hedgers, people who are trying to hedge maybe the FOMC or CPI reading, and then what we call the dynamic hedging group, which is market makers, dealers, uh, volatility funds, things like that. And then retail, we see the data shows us 10% uh, is retail. Now, the, the key here in the TLDR is that the zero DT flow is predominantly in the morning. It's people buying calls and buying puts. And then that flow will change a little bit over the course of the day as people either monetize new positions. Uh, there are some traders who are selling a little bit of the wings, some of the research shows, but really the big flow is people coming out of the open, buying calls and buying puts. And then lastly, we want to touch on the topic of uh, Gamageddon or Volmageddon, whatever you may want to call it. it JP Morgan put out a piece about this that basically said, can zero DT lead to flash crash type events? And we want to discuss that very briefly. So the stats, again, volume has really topped out. Uh, zero DT flows are also very distinct from longer dated flows, both in obviously the amount of volume that's being traded, but also sort of the complexion of that volume as we're going to touch on here. So first, we'll hit the high level topic here. Zero DT volume, again, has driven overall S&P options volume. You can see late in 2023, uh, there was a huge spike in volume. That is a percentage of zero DT, and that coincided here on the right with what you can see is that when the Tuesday, Thursday options came on again in late Q3, early Q4, that led to just a massive increase in the amount of zero DTE volume that really unlocked some type of a strategy. While the longer tenors, uh, the one to five days or, or DTEs over six days, you can see that volume has increased a little bit, but it's still uh, relatively muted compared to zero DTE. As we mentioned before, the zero DT has really peaked at 45%. The largest day that we've measured for the S&P complex uh, is 53%. And it has moved down to 35%, particularly over the bank crisis when volatility is a little higher. People are focused on hedging tail risks and things like that. That percentage of zero DT came down. However, we have not really seen it uh, on average peak over this 45% level. When you look uh, in detail, a little bit more detail about how much volume is zero DT versus all volume. Again, as you can see here in teal, indeed zero DT picked up as we mentioned in September, but it stayed very flat. Again, all volume got a boost, but it too has now flattened out, which really kind of tells us the story that whatever the strategies were that were maybe unlocked by zero DT volume, be it, you know, I think primarily hedging flows, people very quickly adopted those hedging flows and then things have really cooled off or stayed stable since then. What's interesting, if you look at the put call ratios of the all zero DT options versus all S&P options, as most of you are probably aware, generally more SPX puts trade than calls. And that's still true if you look at all expirations. Uh, and this is really the case after the 1987 crash and people started using SPX puts as downside protection. But what's different about zero DT is it's very balanced put versus call. It's almost one-to-one -one, as you can see in our chart here. That's, that's quite a distinction from the kind of 1.5 PC ratio, put call ratio that you see in all expirations. So again, people are using Longer dated SPX still is a hedging tool. However, there is clearly a lot of zero DT flow that is used not just uh, for downside purpose, hedging purposes, but also upside in calls. What this chart is, it kind of drives this home, where if you look at the put call ratio by tenor of this chart is from Bank of America, you can see in green, the longer tenors, you know, that is the longer dated expirations have larger put call ratios. The put call ratio is higher. You can see it's nearly two to one for those longest dated expirations were again, zero DT down around 1%. So clearly the long-term hedgers are still kind of doing their thing. And it doesn't appear that that long-term volume has necessarily been cannibalized. It's just that zero DT unlocks some other type of flow. Lastly here, the average trade size really is different with zero DT, which is interesting because obviously the premium rates are, are quite a bit less for zero DT. You can see the average trade size is uh, well under four, a little bit closer to three for uh, zero DTE, but it's a little bit closer up towards six, six lots when you're looking at all expiration. And obviously all expiration, the premium levels are generally going to be higher 
when you're looking at options that expire out in time. So who is using zero DT flow? There's a small amount of retail if you look at what the research says. And then we think there's a lot of buying for both hedging and speculation. And again, the research suggests that this is mostly institutional flows, be it buy side or sell side institutional flow. This is a great chart from JP Morgan here. And what you see is the percentage of retail orders in both SPX, which is in blue, and SPY, which is in black. And no surprise here that the SPY retail percentage is higher at about 20%, whereas the SPX flow is uh, closer to 5%. This is not much of a surprise, obviously. The notional values of spiders is quite a bit less than SPX. But again, this 5 to 10% number is what we often hear and see from the banks in terms of their estimate of the retail percentage. When we look for evidence of directional trading, are people buying or selling these options? There's a lot of very clear data, in both spot gamer research as well as the bank research. We're going to talk about that. It is people buying uh, these options, and at least in the morning when the market opens. And that gives us a little bit of better information about who we see trading and why. In this case, what we see is that Bank of America estimates that it's net demand for zero DTE that uh, it's directional users, so people looking to either bet on buying a call because they think either it's going to go up for hedging purposes or they think that the market may rebound, and that is leaving market makers and dealers short gamma. We're going to see this short gamma theme come up several times, and as we all know, when you own options, you are long gamma. When you are short options, you are short gamma. And these zero DTE options, when you buy them, that is going to leave market makers short gamma. However, again, there's some evidence that suggests that uh, traders are selling the wings, so they may buy the more at the monies and sell the wings. We also see people monetize. What we see is monetize these trades pretty quickly. So uh, there's a lot of there was a lot of attention to the J.P. Morgan piece that talked about you know volumetted by the zero DDEs. And the issue that we took with that report was that if if people start to buy these options, if you buy puts and the market slides down three four percent, the flow that we see consistently day in day out is that people monetize those puts, right? Because as we get closer to the end of the day. Or if a market was to say be halted or something like that, you want to monetize that put because it expires in an hour or two hours or something like that. This is particularly true in spiders where you could be assigned the put at the end of the day, right? And a lot of people are here to, to make their bet intraday. They're not necessarily wanting to carry that position overnight like you would with spiders if you were assigned. A little bit different in STX where you have cash, but again, these things have such a great deal of gamma associated with them that you want to monetize them when the opportunity is ripe. So what we think is that people are buying those options in the morning, and then as they're, as the market is really moving, we'll often see them monetize and we'll see the flow switch. This chart is from Morgan Stanley. It backs the chart we just saw that you could see in the morning here, right around the market opened around 9 o'clock, 9.30 or 10 o'clock, that they estimate that dealers indeed, they get short gamma. And then around 2.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they call it peak gamma, which I thought was quite interesting. And again, this syncs with the idea that into the close, you want to clean up these positions, right? Particularly in spiders. And so you can see that gamma profile suddenly shift. And so this is, we think is really quite interesting that that gamma profile builds over the day. Dealers obviously short this gamma as they're supplying the street with calls and puts. And then those positions all get closed up into the end of the day. Here, we're going to move into some of the spot gamma proprietary research, which we think is so fascinating. Now on the uh, x-axis here is the market low relative to the close of the day. So this was a 4% low intraday that the market closed up towards zero. And this is how high the market was over the close of the day. So at one point, the market was 3% over where it closed over the session. Now on the y-axis is the delta traded. And what's so fascinating to us is what you can see here is that on days where there's a major intraday low where the market rallied, you see very large zero DTE delta traded. So what does this mean? This means that when there is big dips in the market, and honestly, we see this a lot after the market opens very weakly, you see people come out and they buy zero DT calls and they sell zero DT puts. Now, obviously the call buying is a little bit bigger. I think the risk profile is just much better to buy a very cheap zero DT call if you think the market's gonna rally a whole bunch, right? And conversely, when the market's at a high, you see the opposite. You see people come in and they buy zero DT puts and they sell zero DT calls. And again, Buying a put on the high when it's a very cheap zero DT put, the risk reward there is probably a lot better. And so what you see is this buying volume into extreme moves. And what we think that does is it causes mean reversion in the market. So if you think back to mid-October, there was a very large drawdown after the CPI reading in the morning in futures and the market opened around 3,500. And we saw just this massive rip in the day. There was very large zero DT call buying on that day. Now, what's interesting about this flow is you'll note inside of 1%, negative 1% to positive 1%, that flow changes and it shifts. The deltas seem to flip. So in other words, as we see positive deltas on dips and negative deltas on rips, when the market has less than a 1% move either way, 
that flow shifts such that the positive delta flow comes on this very small moves higher and the negative delta flow comes on these small moves lower. So again, on extreme moves, people seem to be buying these puts and calls, forcing mean reversion. And then when we have very small market moves, less than 1% kind of either way, the flow actually shifts and seems to really change complexion. It's really quite an interesting phenomenon and something that we've seen uh, or that we see play out in real time every single day. And we're going to show that to you in a minute. To exclude zero DTE from the same data. So this chart uh, and this chart are the same. Well, this is non-zero DTE delta traded. You can see there still is this negative delta response to large market rallies. And we think this is longer dated calls being sold. But what you lose is any kind of positive delta response on major market declines. And in some ways, this makes sense because you're risking a lot more, arguably, if you're buying a call option on a big drawdown when volatility is quite high. There's just a much different risk profile to buying a zero DTE call in are a big dip. And further, you see down here, there's a lot more negative delta trading, as you can see, this lower left quadrant on big drawdowns for longer data options or non-zero DT options. You just don't quite see that in the zero DT space, right? People don't seem to be paying a lot for puts when the market is down a whole lot. Now, on this point, one of the predominant flows that we think occurs in this situation is after large drawdowns, if you own a whole bunch of puts or you're short a whole bunch of delta and the market really drops sharply, you want to hedge some of that. And arguably one of the most interesting ways to hedge that would be to buy some of these cheap zero DD calls, right? Because then if the market rallies quite a bit, you didn't pay very much to hedge out your negative deltas or hedge out your long dated put position. You paid a little bit and oftentimes those can pay off quite a bit. Now to this point, if we look at, the, at this chart from Bank of America, which you can see is they sort of look at the merit of owning what they call zero DT lottery tickets. And what you can see is that some of the payoffs here are really quite substantial. In fact, they note that there are several times here where the payout of these things were over 10% net, which says that, hey, this is a compelling and interesting int uh, reason to own situationally some of these zero DT calls as well as zero DTE puts on the right. And that the payout of these things, obviously, because they are so cheap and starting can be really very compelling particularly we think if you're hedging rather than buying futures uh, to hedge some of your deltas, if you switch to using some of these zero DTEs, uh, you could probably calibrate the payoff ratios and really make it a very interesting alternative to uh, owning the underlying asset or trading the underlying asset. So what is the higher order impact of this flow? Uh, again, one of the things that we talked about at the opening here was there was this idea of Balmageddon that got a ton of attention and is zero DTE a momentum driver in markets that are leaving short gamma? I think we laid out that fact that particularly in the morning and into uh, really noon, it is true that zero DT is likely putting negative gamma obligations onto the dealer market maker community. We think, however, on net, what zero DT is doing is reducing volatility. And that is because we see uh, that large buying the dip with calls order flow or selling the rip with puts order flow. And then again, as the market moves quite a bit, that flow is monetized which shifts the imbalance of zero DT flow for dealers and market makers. And so on this topic of changing volatility as a result of zero DTE, we thought that this chart from Goldman was really quite interesting. What they did here is they looked at the change in close to close volatility minus intraday volatility. And what you could see is late last year, something really shifted in the markets. And it just looks a lot different optically than anything we've seen in the last couple of years. And it's a little bit unique that this occurs right around the time that zero DT lifted so much. This is something we want to dig into a little bit more. But again, if you think that because overnight we don't have a whole lot of zero DT volume, and then once the market opens, the cash market opens at 930, we see a whole lot of this mean reverting order flow that can maybe drive initial sort of 1% intraday moves, but those moves are then very you know stifled or mean reversion is hoisted back on the market as a result of people monetizing flows or, or adjusting those zero DT flows. So there appears to be some differences in the way that volatility is behaving in general with zero DT. And to this point, we present this chart here, which shows the correlation of the VIX to the SPX. And as you can see, again, late in September, right as this zero DT was starting to take off on the right here, we have zero DT volumes. You can see that there's this very clear change in the behavior of the SPX to the VIX. And the VIX, which uses 30-day options, S&P options to, for prices, those 30-day options are going to be relatively unaffected in theory by all that zero DT volume taking place. Now, a lot of people said, hey, look, the VIX is now dead. We don't think that's true. In fact, that we, we think that when you need to hedge tail risk, the VIX is really going to matter. The prices of options that, that exist down time, VIX calls, VIX futures, all those still matter. And we saw that during the bank crisis in mid, mid to early March, we saw 
whole lot of VIX calls trade. We saw the VIX spike to 30. Suddenly the focus shifted back to those longer dated options. But clearly there, the behavior, the relationship between the VIX and the S&P has been adjusted. Again, I don't think it means the VIX is meaningless. It just means that we need to think a little differently about the way that these flows change. So how can you monitor these zero DTE flows? Well, for that, we flipped over to our HERO dashboard. Now what the HERO system does is it monitors every single option trade that takes place in real time. And we can break this order flow down to get an idea of exactly what's happening. So a lot of the conclusions that we've drawn about zero TD have come from this tool. Now we're looking at here is the S&P 500 complex. This is all the SPF index options that have traded today and all the SPY ETF options that have traded today. And in white is the price of the SPX index and in blue is all of the available options flow. So as you can see on the dip here in the market in the morning, positive delta order flow came in. That's what we're monitoring here on the right Y axis. Positive delta flow came in and the market rallied in through the morning. Now, if you want to actually look at what the zero DTE flow is, what we could do is we could check off that zero DTE flow. Further, we can split it out by put and call. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all expiration flow. Now, when we do this, we can see in green that this line goes up. The line going up, again, it suggests it's positive delta flow from zero DTE calls. Well, to get positive delta flows out of zero DTE calls, those need to be bought. So again, people bought the dip, this morning's dip, using zero DTE calls. And on the put side, there's very, very light put selling. And again, it's put selling because the deltas drift a little bit higher. And then what you can see is as the market moved up into the 40, 90 area, the line turns down, the blue line turns down, which tells us that people bought some puts, they monetize them. So this is a great example of, again, in the morning, what we see is those positive delta flows come in in the form of calls being bought, which we see every day. And this just really syncs with all the data that we just presented. Now, if we just add the puts and calls together, we look at the deltas in total. You can see how very closely today the market moved or shifted around with these deltas. We think that oftentimes, as you can see here, zero DT negative delta flow came in, it leads markets lower, and then it, the bounce gets bought. You can see that hero teal line moves before the market does, right? We see this oftentimes on particularly a little bit lighter volume days where equity volume may be a little, a bit, little bit lighter. It's not a quarter end or there's not a lot of news out there. We see these options flows really come in and drive price action. Now, if you're interested in trying this out for yourself, all you have to do is head over to spotgamma.com, hit subscribe now, and then what you wanna do is select the alpha membership. You get a free seven day trial with this where you get full access to Hero. We have dozens of different videos that show you how to use this to monitor zero DT flows. And we have dozens of different videos and training resources to make sure you understand how to read these zero DT flows. And so we are going to leave it there, draw our conclusions there. Please reach out to me at info at spotgamma.com. You can also reach me at spotgamma on Twitter where we share a lot of these charts in real time. And as always, if you have any questions or feedback, you can leave them in the comment section below. Thanks so much.